I'm the chair of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee of Deerfield, Massachusetts, and uh, I'm calling the meeting to order at 5.01 p.m. on Thursday, June 3rd. Um, so on the agenda, the first thing on the agenda is to approve the minutes of two previous meetings. Um, I, and I, um, I had emailed uh, copies of the minutes to everybody. Perhaps, uh, hopefully you had a chance to look them over. Um, so starting with the meeting of May 6th, uh, any, any comments, discussion? Do I hear a motion to approve them? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of May 6th. And, and I'll second that. This is Carolyn. Okay, and a second from Carolyn. And so um, all in favor, Jack Davey, aye. Jeff Upton? Aye. Denise Mason? Aye. Mark Brennan? Aye. And Carolyn Ness? Aye. And uh, the motion carries unanimously. So moving along to the, uh, the minutes of the May 11th meeting, which and I got to and Jeff Upton, I will make a motion to move the minutes of May 11th. Okay. And I'll and second that again. Okay. Okay. And um, so all in favor, Jack Davey, aye. Jeff Upton? Aye. Denise Mason? Aye. Mark Brennan? Aye. And Carolyn Ness? Aye. And the motion carries unanimously. Um, okay, so the next thing on the agenda, the next item on the agenda has to do with the, the CIPC bylaw uh, once again. And um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, what happened is um, the finance committee met with the select board about this. And we decided that the you know uh, two weeks is gonna be really tight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously 60 days is way far out. We put a lot of work into our capital improvement plan and, you know, nobody has the budget numbers by then ever, even, even in good, you know, regular right. years. So um, I was suggesting a compromise of 21 days. So it would be three weeks instead of two weeks. And everybody felt that we could post and have adequate time to review it. You know, the finance committee, the select board, um, and Casey's office. So um, I was hoping that we would, um, we have to agree as a, as a committee that the 21 days is adequate. Right. And Carolyn, could I jump in just for, for a sure. second there, please? With the, it, with the fine, and I concur with Carolyn, obviously, uh, because the more we looked at that with the Tom warrants and everything, the articles, uh, it just was too tight. A two week period would be just too tight. Uh, when we review this and we actually were going through the process uh, Tuesday night uh, with the finance committee. And so it does make it awful tight. Uh, a couple of the finance committee members expressed that they would even like to go out a month prior. So, uh, you know, we have talked about the 21 days, but I just want to throw it out there that um, a couple of the finance committee members uh, felt that a, a month would work a little bit better as far as the budget and the uh, articles for the town warrant them to be able to get through it and hold the meetings that they needed to hold. So, uh, you know, that's up for discussion in myself personally. I can live with 21 days or I think the month, the month would be the max for me. I think it puts the capital improvement out to its max. But, yeah, uh, I, I didn't but, feel comfortable. I didn't feel comfortable with the month because, um, you know, I felt like we, you know, we put so much work into prioritizing it and trying to really you know, it, what's a need and what's a want. And I, I, I just felt that a month out, we just never have the budget done well enough to, to know how much money we can spend and how much we, you know, what the prioritizing of, 
of the capital project. So, so that's why I was suggesting three weeks. And, and we could try it. I mean, we can change it next year. If, if three weeks isn't gonna work, um, we can push it out. But I felt like we needed to be part of more of a part of the process. I, I felt we were, the CIPC works so hard and we have good review processes now and then we're out outside the budget cycle you know right. with everybody so i i wanted us to try three weeks well i don't i don't have a problem with with three weeks I, you know and actually the two weeks i i think i had kind of just thrown that out and i maybe without considering all the ramifications of it although you know for years we didn't have any deadline at all and we just kind of worked with the select board and the and the finance committee um but i don't know i i as far as i'm concerned 21 days makes sense anybody else have any thoughts or casey has her hand up oh um, casey i can't see i have casey. a comment jack yes <laughs> i just have a comment so when the con when the conversation with finance committee and select board happened about well two weeks might not be enough. I did talk to council. The warrant has been published with the two weeks, but council clarified for us that we can make a change through the motion to address it as perhaps three weeks if that's what you all vote tonight. And so I just need to know that from that perspective and anything, you know, it, we will make work whatever you all decide. Okay. Jack, I have a comment, Jeff. Yep, go ahead, Jeff. Uh, I agree with Carolyn. The, the 21 days is, is, I think, a pretty good number. We can give that a try. But remember, that's, that's uh, at least. So it's, it doesn't mean that we can't have it done before. Right, if, right. If we, um, so, so that's why I say I, I think, you know, we can be, if a lot of people end up uh, on this committee next year, I think the understanding will be that we'll try to get our work done as quickly and as efficiently as right. we can and keep that, keep that time frame in mind. So uh, be able to put a product, a good product out there. But so I, I feel comfortable myself with, like Carolyn said, with the 21 days and let's give it a whirl. And if we get it done earlier, we can present it earlier. Right, and we and might decide if, that we want to. We might decide that we want to do it earlier than that. Uh, right. Ken, uh, yeah, Ken I, I, his, his hand right. up. Um, I I think twenty one days from my perspective is fine. Um, the closer we can have the ultimate deadline to the town meeting, the better off we are. I mean, here we are reviewing two more requests tonight. Um, so right. it's just a just an example of it as whatever works best in town council's eyes in terms of the warrants and everything else. Um, I'm all for 21 days. Um, I think a month is, you know, we could do it, but I think you, you end up with, you're going to miss things and things will fall through the cracks. So 21 days is fine with me. Okay. So, um, so do I hear a motion to, I don't know what we're doing. Are we, we're endorsing or amending, right. amending, amending. or recommending the. Right. Recommending an amendment to the town meeting warrant article for capital improvement recommendations to read each year, not less than 21 days prior to annual town meeting, the capital improvement planning committee shall submit to the select board the capital improvement plan, which includes the capital improvement budget for the ensuing fiscal year and recommended capital improvements for the following four fiscal years. And, and what article number is that, Casey? I didn't... Oh, you had to ask me. Of course. It's article number four, section 10 through I 17. I moved, okay. I moved it around. So, so, <laughs> we're, we're, so it's a motion to amend article four to read 21 days instead of 14. Yes. Well put. Uh, sorry, uh, just kidding. It's Article 6. Uh, article, article 6. That's what I was going to say. It's Article 6, I think. No, it's Article... Wait, wait, wait. Just get an article. No, that's... 
it's there. I just, now I can't find it because I want to find it. <laughs> Trevor, don't. Article 14. I make a Article motion 14. to amend Article 14 from 14 days to 21 days. Excellent. So, I'll I second. second that. Oh, there must be a typo in what I have. What I have says six. All right. Well, whichever 14, article. Six, four, whatever it is. Yeah, it'll be it'll be Article 14 in the latest copy that I have. And it's a general bylaw change capital improvement recommendation. So I'm so gonna send the final warrant I, out to you guys. Right. Yeah, I, so so I, I don't you think just Mark, sent it. So oh I okay, because I don't think Mark has the current version. So yeah, we, I'll send it out. I just I just got this. Uh, we just received this in the finance committee Tuesday evening here. So it's uh, because some of the articles Casey had to move around. And so it's article 14 in the latest in the latest draft. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I will make a motion. I already did. Uh, I think we already got a motion. You can second it, Jeff. I already made a motion. Already the motion. Got, then <laughs> I'll second it. It's already right seconded. <laughs> you can third it, Jeff. Yeah, I'm busy looking want. stuff up. Okay, so Ken, Ken seconded okay. it. Um, I think Mark seconded it. Oh, Mark seconded. Mark or Carolyn, one or the other. Doesn't matter. Doesn't well, matter. All right, I'm putting down Mark. Perfect. Um, okay, so all in favor? Jack Davy, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. Uh, Denise Mason, aye. Aye. Uh, Ken Cutterback? Aye. Mark Brennan? Aye. And Carolyn Ness? Aye. And the motion carries unanimously. 14 days or, or 21 days. All right. So the next yes. thing on the agenda has to do with the sewer line in Old Deerfield. And Kevin, Kevin is here. Hi, Kevin. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having um, me. <laughs> what's that? So thanks for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. So uh, at one of our previous meetings, we did have, Kevin, I believe you did do a, a little presentation about this, this looming problem. Um, so basically what we've got is, is we have about a thousand feet of, of cured in place that has to be done um, well, here, let me back up. Has everybody seen the, what we're talking about? Yes. Well, yes. I've, re yeah. yes, I've looked at the, so, so you, so you saw the plan where, where it shows where the line's going up the road. Okay. So going on Albany road, which is, which is like heading towards the cemetery, you go down the road and then it cuts across uh, the backside of this, the uh, ball field. And then it stops at the generator. That is a cured in place or a lined section. From there down the hill, it will be adding three more manholes and about 500 feet of open cut um, replacement. And what does open cut mean? Uh, it basically means it, because like the, the cured in place is what they'll do is they'll, they'll take a, a liner, put it through there and kind of blow it out a little bit. And then it cures there. Um, and then it, it's, it's like... Um, um, almost like a fiberglass for a poor choice of putting it. So an open but, cut but is open like cut, open, open cut trip. is you rip it right down to the pipe. You pull the old pipe out, you put brand new pipe in. So that is what they call open cut, which is obviously much more expensive because you're just not running a, a liner through. Um, so long story short is, is, is Deerfield Academy has been gracious enough to be able to this um and it's about three hundred eighty-one thousand dollars, which is definitely a, a savior on our part because technically it is our line um it does feed them um but they're once again the only, you know they're actually the only customer if yeah. if they stomp their foot down correct um, um so with that being said, but the other side of the coin is, is, you know, if they put their foot down and say, well, sorry, you know, it, it's your line, it's your responsibility, they, you, they could say that. Can I, hey, Trevor, Trevor. Uh, so, um, so Trevor. Dave Prickett did a whole, um, you know, cameraed all of our lines in Old Deerfield. 
and we've got a lot going up the hill to Eagle Brook. We've got a lot of other areas, but this one section that goes down to our plant takes all of the waste from all of Old Deerfield that goes into that. So it's not just servicing just them, but it goes right through their campus. And this year, because of COVID and the way they're re gearing up for next year, they're not having any summer programs there this year. So this is the one time they said, if you could get in here and change this, this summer, we'll pay for it. Um, that's how bad they want it done because all the kids will be gone as long as we get it done before the last week of, uh, or the second to last week of August, um, mm -hmm. get in there, do the, you know, the piping work and then do the open cut trench stuff. Uh, but it does take all of the stuff. It's kind of the last pipe that, before it goes to our plant. So well, I, I see, I see now the, the pipe continues yes. along to the treat, treatment plant. It's it just not and, on and, the, it's not shown. Correct. On the, yeah. And, and more of that needs to get done too, but, but because we haven't had time to kind of go out and get grant work, uh, right. grant money, and kind of put a whole plan together yet, we said, you know, we'll just do this one section. If DA, you'll pay for that. And they offered to do that. So we thought, let's, let's take the money when we can, do the work when we can, and then come back to you all and, and talk about the bigger project next year or over the next year. Uh, but just to get this one section uh, done because we weren't going to have to raise any money for it. Um, and, and they're gracious enough to pay for it. So just kind of get that little section done and then come back and talk about the bigger project. So what happens if we can't get it done by August 13th? Uh, we feel very confident we can. And the, and okay. we're rolling forward with that in mind. Yep. Okay, uh, I don't know, Den uh, Denise? I have a question. So so are you going to do open cut? Or are you going to do the expansion? And then- A mixture. A mixture. Okay, so it doesn't it doesn't matter. You could do a mixture. And so what's what's the um, longevity of a mixture? Is the open cut doing that? Will that last a lot longer so, than the other? No, it's they will last about the same amount of time. It's just that um, so some pipes are so bad in that area that they can't be they can't be um, lined and and done. The others that can be lined and done, you don't have to dig up. You don't have to do all the boring and all the extra work involved and it and it can be done kind of mostly any time but um mm -hmm. it's still quite a bit of work and rebuilding the manholes and stuff so you're only going to kind of uh do the the open cut where it really needs it where the pipes are completely ready to collapse so those are the sections that we're going to dig up and do right now the mm -hmm. others they should last about the same amount of time they're very strong once that that heat gets in there and that fiberglass hardens We'll be in there for quite a quite a long time, Great, and for the you. savings, yeah, I'll give you fifty years. Oh, yeah, good. fifty years. Okay. Yeah, you can ballpark fifty years. And, yep. yeah. um, you know, like 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 Trevor was saying, you know, that one section that's coming down the hill that is the open cut that has to be a replacement. Um, I'll be honest with you, I am extremely surprised that it's not collapsed already. Um, yeah, it's no longer yeah. round. It's it's more like a uh, it's almost like a rectangle um, mm -hmm. to the yeah. point that they are having trouble getting the camera to go up through it that's how much it's crushed down um that being said you know if if we don't do it now especially with their funding behind it a we can get to pick up the tab uh the other part is is it, it's probably going to be january february when it happens Ooh. and when it does your prices are going to double or triple just because yeah um well it's going to be disruptive to their operation what they do. and that was so. where the leverage came in where they were willing to give us the money so that there yeah. was no interruption to their their um you know schedule year schedule no so, kids gonna be there because there's no programs we can shut down the pipe and we can replace it because it like trevor and kevin said it's horrendous this is the same section of pipe that we got a grant for oh six or seven years ago um what, but our hazardous mitigation plan hadn't it got stuck being approved in FEMA. So we had to give the money back because we couldn't do the contract within the given time of the, um, and that was 700 and something thousand dollars that we got. Mm. So, you know, this is this is not a new problem, but I, I'm, I actually am shocked it hasn't failed already. Mm. Uh, and Kevin, aren't there two other lines running through the fields out there that tie into this main line to the sewage treatment plant? Um, that feed from the other parts of town, and they've been recently yeah. replaced, haven't they? 
Yeah, what they did was was when you when you go to the far end of town, the north end, they they lined in 2010, they lined from uh, five and ten to basically the corner or where the chlorine house used to be. Right. Um, from the chlorine house directly out to actually teeing into this line we're talking about. Right. And then that in turn goes into the plant within 200 feet. Mm -hmm. um, that right there was completely replaced all the way across the field. So. Right. Yeah. Just, I just wanted other people to be aware of that. I don't know if any other people were aware of it. So um, that would give us. The, the some... on five and tens in pretty decent shape. Right. You know, but there's, uh, like Trevor said, the coming down uh, Pine Nook, that's ugly. I mean, there's there's <laughs> so much displacement between uh, there. Literally, the, one of them, I, I've got a video. It looks like there's a spigot running directly into, I mean, you know, like hundreds of gallons an hour that uh, we're treating. because, And that's just that one spot. So inadvertently, I, you know, hopefully this is going to you know, with this whole I and I system that they're they're going through and testing and looking and trying to fix, um, it's going to save us in the long run. Um, yeah, but but may it's I make a, comment? a real long run. I'm, I'm sorry, Joe. Yeah, just very quickly. I myself, to me, this appears to be a no-brainer. Uh, it helps. It helps DA. Uh, it helps the town of Deerfield at some point in time we're going to have to replace this anyways. And so we have a great opportunity here. Uh, kids are going to be gone. It's wide open. Uh, it just makes it a whole lot easier to work, get it done. It's uh, cost going to be covered by DA, which is going to help the town of Deerfield. And it's just, it's a nice reach out and let's work together type thing. And hopefully, you know, going forward, when we have to deal with the rest of that sewer uh, wastewater treatment plan up there, that they'll also keep this in mind that you know we are willing to work with them and hopefully in the future on the other, they'll be willing to work with us a little bit too. So I, I just think this is a, a plus plus for everybody, a win-win situation here. Yep. So I guess basically what we're doing is, is, is we're requesting that you would uh, recommend moving forward with this. Technically, it doesn't have to go to finance because there's no town monies. Technically, it doesn't have to go to town meeting because, once again, there's no town, there's no, um, town monies being spent. But we're trying to make sure we dot our I's, cross our T's um, to make sure that, that, you know, we don't step on anybody's toes. We're making sure we're trying to get the right thing done. You know, we apologize, obviously, that this came in at such a late date, but it was, you know, it was a while before we got confirmation that we're going to get um, funding from DA. So there was a lot of things, there was a lot, a lot of well, balls in the air is what the problem was. Well, the trustees only just met two weeks ago, so they had to yeah. pay the funding. Right. So, so it's not anything to do with you, Kevin. Oh, no, 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 no. no. But what I'm just saying is, is, is there's just a lot of things that they came up. So this is all re we are requesting at this point in time is, is if you'd be so kind as go ahead and recommend that we move forward with this. Um, so that way we're just staying within the bylaw change of uh, uh, 2018. What, what I wanted to know oh. is when we submit the, um, the piping project, do you want this part of it to be in it or not? Because we have the piping, you know, like everyone is saying from, you know, Pine Nook is a wreck and we have, we haven't completely finished South Deerfield. So do you want the total of all the piping project or do you just want this to be a one-off and minus, I mean, how, how do you. I, well, well, I would say one-off on this one because we're, we're looking at very specific funding for this one project, which is basically 1500 feet. Right. Um, you know, and, and obviously, you know, we we're, we'll be coming back and, and talking about later, but but this actual request that was that was the paper request that was put in um, is very specific to what we're doing at Deer, behind Deerfield Academy. OK, so it will be separated. It will be separated from the total piping project. Oh, oh definitely. Oh, hands down. Yeah, because otherwise you're talking millions, literally. I know. I'm sorry, but. <laughs> I know. Yes. I'll make a recommend recommendation to move uh, the capital, the FY21 capital expenditure request uh, date submitted to 6 2 2021 
for the sewer line project as far as replacement and lining, Albany Road slash Little Meadow Road back of DA for 381,000 that DA will be covering the cost. Second that. I, I think you'd want to say subject to it being completed by August 13th for DA to cover the cost. How does that sound? Okay, that sounds good to me. Very good motion. <laughs> subject, yeah, subject to, uh, yeah, to Deerfield Academy no. covering the cost. Subject to being able to, yes, by being able to complete by August 13th in order for DA to cover the cost. Can I make a recommendation? Sure. sure. Um, I, I would probably, because what would happen if it was the 14th? You'd have to ask, you, you, you know, tell but me what, what, what I'm getting at is, is, is if you put a date on it, if you want to do it, say, as long as it's completed while Deerfield Academy would be willing to reimburse entire expenses for a project. That way you're not throwing a date on it. You throw a date on it because I, I don't know, uh, Trevor, is there a drop dead date that Deerfield Academy put in the contract said that if it's not done by this date, we will not pay? Didn't, but they do, you know, so what's going to happen is that once this passes here, I'm going to request the money from Keith. Uh, uh, Brenda's going to make a, um, you know, special, special fund. Um, a fund in our general fund to accept the money. Uh, bids are going to go out very shortly. We're going to get those back and, and get moving. Uh, Dave Prickett has been in touch with Deerfield Academy and talking with Keith, you know, um, weekly and sometimes daily about the time frame, we feel very confident that we can get, you know, they start with the open cut first and, you know, a lot of this stuff, they feel like they can get it done other than the, um, there'll still be paperwork and stuff to complete and final inspections that'll be towards the end of August, but the construction work will be done and the guys will be gone. So, um, so it really is that the project is scheduled to end at the end of August, but there won't be any guys on site probably two weeks before the end of August, they'll be completed and out of there. You know, and you never know what can happen, but I don't think DA is going to pull the funding if we're, you know, a week late. It's just going to be very uncomfortable. We're going to do everything possible, you know, to just get, get this done for them because it's so critical to their infrastructure and their, their plans and all I just that. Was so everybody's you're going to pigeonhole in yourself into a date. That's all. Right. That was my, yeah. So I would just, you know, it's really that the calendar goes to the end of August, um, but but because it's just paperwork stuff and inspections finishing up, uh, the construction, most of the construction will be done at the second week of August. Okay, uh, Denise? Denise. One other question. So do we have a written agreement with them? Because I'm uncomfortable just having a verbal agreement and having no date. I mean, I would prefer to have a date and then if something happens, just do a change order. We all... Uh, all Deerfield Academy deals with us verbally. Only. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, verbally only. Gonna, They're not okay. going to give us anything in writing. Okay. But they are going to give us the money. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're really good about following. Why does they give us the check in writing? Then let's uh, vote on they'll, it. They'll do, they'll do. If, <laughs> they, if yeah. they commit to money, I never yeah, okay. in, my, in all my years of dealing with them, yeah. if they've kept committed to money, and Keith Finan is a good okay. officer, we've that's, never had any let's yeah. vote i'm hungry all right okay okay so the, so the i don't i don't motion think we need by jeff is to case. recommend the expenditure of three hundred eighty-one thousand dollars for the replacement lining of the sewer line on albany road and little meadow road as delineated in the uh capital expenditure request form of six two uh subject to deerfield academy covering the cost is that Sounds good. Okay. And uh, so is there a second? Mark. There was. Yep. Who was the who was the second? Mark. Mark. Okay. Seconded. Okay. All in favor. Jack Davy, aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Denise Mason. Aye. Ken Cutterback. Aye. Mark Brennan. Aye. And Carolyn Ness. Aye. Okay, and the motion carries unanimously. Um, thank you all so much, and thank you, Kevin. Really appreciate it. Yep.
Okay, there was just one more. Really, really appreciate you all doing that. And we'll get it on, getting it done. Um, there's one more. Uh, one more item on the agenda, yes. Yeah. Not for me. So thank you very much, thank you, Kevin. Thank we'll you. see you. Have a good night. Thank, thank you. you, Kevin. Thank you. Um, th there okay. is some discussion that this is not even a CIPC um, article, but I, but by the by the town contributing to the conservation restriction we are a stakeholder so i feel that we need to go through the process of approving it the cpa committee and the select board and the finance committee have already approved this so this is like sorry, sorry. oh um the select board the finance committee and the cpa committee have already recommended this so I feel like this, I'm sorry, but this literally came up Thursday, late Thursday afternoon. And so we had, because of the holiday, we didn't, we couldn't even post this until Wednesday. So what this is, is a fist property um, on South Mill River Road. The APR program is putting this property to the head of the uh, line. It, it will be to preserve fourth generation um, um, parcel and it is being used by Pam Fisk to buy out her siblings. And because it's already been surveyed, it's prime soils, it's a lovely piece of property. Um, the APR program is, is prioritizing this. And so they called me and said that they were going to do it in the next two or three weeks. And they wanted our 10% um, contribution for um, the conservation restrictions. So um, I just wanted to make sure that we were, you know, going through checking off the right boxes. Uh, Ken? Yeah, um, just a couple of questions. Exactly which piece, I should know which piece of property it is, but which-, Casey, which can property? you put it up? Can you put it up the I parcel? I can't, I can't put the parcel up. The parcel is map 148 lot seven. Just describe um, where it is to me. <laughs> it is on, it's, well, the address is 23 South Mill River. It's- mm -hmm. When you're driving up 116, yeah. it's the beautiful parcel off to your left that, um, you know, abuts South Mill River Road. It's okay. that, the big red barn there. Yeah, it's the yeah, one yeah. that- it's, yeah, in it's a, kind of a, it's in that it's area. Kind of a new house, like on the on the right. corner of I don't know what that crossroad is, but there's I can't kind of think a, of the name of the crossroad. But I yeah. that's that's yeah. what I thought it was. But I just wanted to be sure. Um, second question, Carolyn. I believe you need planning board approval as well. It's a purchase of, or you know, it's essentially uh, uh -oh. property. I'm, I'm, that that's what we haven't determined whether it's a purchase or not. Well, I, well I it's a council. contribution. <laughs> <laughs> I try. I, I sent I, an email request to council yesterday evening. Okay, because to dot i's and cross t's properly, and this won't be on the warrant. This will be on the warrant. Oh, it will, will be, be on, on the, warrant. the warrant. Okay. Well, I I believe anytime there's town involvement in purchases or contributions towards purchases of property, that the planning board is supposed to. Oh God! Say can something we, about it. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry can we to can throw put it on the wrench. agenda for Monday night? We have a meeting Monday night, so we can put it yeah. on the agenda. And you I know, would get it on there. Excellent. Yeah, Car yeah, Carolyn. I don't know if you want you know come in five minutes, or I. I mean, I could present it. Just give me the information. Okay, Casey will send you because I'm actually not going to be around. Yeah, just to be okay. safe, that's what I would do. No, that's um, fine. And Ken, that's a good point. Anytime. Yeah, Casey, yeah. Anytime there's a purchase of land or you hear of one in town, Denise, make sure the planning board okay. opines on it or even an attempt to sell a piece of land. The planning board is supposed to review it. So, right. Okay. Uh, well, from my days as chair. Yeah. Just send me the info and I'll present that on Monday and we'll vote on that. Oh, thank you. Um, Casey, uh, can aerial you map? I'm working yeah. on it right now. Uh, I, that's um, fine. So I, I have a question which I'm not necessarily opposed to this, but I, I have a question. It, the proposal says that uh, a contribution from the town of Deerfield is likely, but unconfirmed at this time. The landowners have agreed that any gap in funding will be taken as a bargain sale. So does that mean if we didn't contribute the 13,000 that the owners would accept 13,000 
Less well, Pam, Pam is trying to buy out her um, siblings. And the reason that's why this is going to the head of the line on the APR program, they, the APR has agreed, or the Department of Agriculture has agreed that this is a, a prime right. parcel. And so it's worth it. And the reason why that they say it that way is so that if we vote no as a town, that the, it's not gonna hold up the APR. So in other she, words, that so then the uh, owners would have the option of just accepting. It's thirteen thousand dollars less. Thirteen thousand. But she less. has to cover that. Um, you know, this is the deal was for the amount to pay off the siblings, and so you know. It, just, it, it seems kind of kind of weird. I don't, I don't, oh, that's like normally how you do it. Mm -hmm. um, the bargain deals because a lot. This this is a small contribution, thirteen thousand. But I mean, sometimes the it's it could be several hundred thousand dollars if it's a large purchase. So um, you have to say that, otherwise it doesn't go through. That's normal language. We just haven't done one in a long time. We haven't we, done one in over ten years. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's been a while. Um, we did we did quite a few. Um, you know, 15 years ago, we were doing quite a bit, but. That's when a farmer retired. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you know, it usually is. I mean, this was the death in the family, you know, the parents died. So mm -hmm. um, that that's how usually it happens. And Pam is trying to keep it in agriculture. So. Yeah, uh, that's important. Yes. Really important. So if, if, She's going to have to have to take out a mortgage if we don't do the thirteen thousand, and that, you know, because she has to she has to buy out her siblings for what yeah. the value. Uh, is. I I'd make a motion to approve the um, capital expenditure request for APR land contribution for land owned by Fisk, Lacroix, and Skalski, dated June second, two thousand twenty-one. I'll second that, Denise. Okay. Jack. Jack, I don't know if this is of any help, but what I did learn Tuesday is once this land goes into the um, APR, into the, APR? The, yeah, APR uh, program, uh, basically that stays for life. Uh, it's not something that they can just turn around and sell off. Um, oh, um, from, yeah, from but... Uh, but you know what? I you know I've been following the the very large proposed solar system in Northfield, and apparently yeah. the the owners of that farmland put it into APR, and now they've bought, bought it back. They've given the money back, you can, so they can put it in a. It's it's possible to buy back the APR restriction, but um, that's through the legislature. Right, there are a couple of steps involved, so. Right, but apparently it is it is possible. Yes, which I, I yeah. was kind of, I was kind of shocked when I read that. Um, but in any in any case, so okay, so we have a motion and we have a second. Uh, all in favor? Jack Davy, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. Denise Mason, aye. Ken Cutterback, yes, aye. Uh, Mark Brennan, aye. And Carolyn Ness. Aye. Okay, and then the motion carries unanimously. So I guess we've covered all the items on the agenda. And is there anything else, uh, Casey, Carolyn? No, I, I thank you everyone for doing it. And thank you so much for your quick response. We appreciate it. Yeah. All right, welcome. And Casey, so, you'll, you'll send me that info for Monday then so that I can present. I already that. did it. Thank you. Okay, cool. Thank you, Denise, for doing that. If, no if there's yes. any questions, I will forward you um, Pam Fist's phone number. Okay. Um, sure. You can talk to her. Okay. I mean, you're not, I, I mean, pretty much everybody knows everybody's business. So, you know. <laughs> it's Deerfield. She, I know. She's, she's trying to, um, she is trying to buy out her siblings. So, that's fine. Yeah, and she's trying to preserve it. So, and it is fourth generation. So I, I, I really- It's important. Yeah, I, it is important. And it is a lovely parcel. There's no question. Yeah, it is. 
I bike past that a lot. Yeah. All right. All right. So do I hear a motion to adjourn? Oh, well, you have something else, uh, uh, Jeff? Yeah. Well, just before we break tonight, I would like to say that Jack, I myself, and I think the committee uh, appreciates all the work you put in this year, and well, you thank did you a for great job you, with this. Thank not, you. Not not an easy thing to do. So no. on but, uh, that, it's been no, easy I'll because make a we, I, I've enjoyed working with everyone, and I, and I think everybody everybody has made very constructive comments about the various different issues and everybody's made a, uh, you know, a, a good attempt to attend the meetings. And uh, so uh, actually it's been a pleasure and I really enjoy work, working with everyone. Yeah. So. Great. Thank you. Thank you. I'll echo the thanks. <laughs> thanks, Jeff. And did you make a motion, Jeff? Yeah, I made a motion to adjourn the meeting. And is second. there a second? Yep. Denise. Denise. Second. And all in favor, Jack Davey, aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Denise Mason. Aye. Ken Cutterback. Aye. Mark Brennan. Aye. And Carolyn Ness. Aye. Okay, the motion carries and we are adjourned at 5.42 p.m. <laughs>